petrified wood is not actually wood at all. It might have the shape of wood and the growth rings and branches of wood, but it is literally made of stone. It has become a fossil. There are many different types of fossils, from an actual insect preserved in amber to a footprint left by an animal millions of years ago. But what we most often think of when we talk about fossils is something that has been fossilized or turned into stone, like this dinosaur bone. I'm Math Dad. I'm Science Mom. And today we're going to learn how fossils are formed. Hello, quick welcome to Lucas in Connecticut and Chris from South Carolina. I see Pickle Obsessed, Zoya, and I saw a lot of chatter in the chat about the rock candy that you guys made. Well, I should say rock cycle candy that you guys made over the weekend. And I'm happy to hear that there was experimenting and... It sounds like some people had more trouble doing it instead of eating the candy. It's a tough, tough thing. Yeah, got it. And the things we do in the name of science. And sometimes, if you do the whole activity and then wait to eat your candy, someone else eats it before you can. Huh, Math Dad? It's a tale of woe. <laughs> Today, we are learning about fossils, and I have a couple of fossils I want to show you right now before we start. And I want you to tell me, or if you're watching the replay, just say out loud what do you think they are. So let's switch our camera view real quick, Math Dad. So our first one might be just a little bit difficult to see in the light, but you can see the shape of something right there and right there. Any guess what this is? Huh, I have a guess. This is a piece of tar, and within the tar, I can see three little shapes of what used to be animals. They are beetles. Beetles, yes. I can see the head right here. I can see the two wings, and this is a piece of tar that is almost a million years old. And these beetles were caught in the tar, and then it got turned into rock. How about this one, Matt? Dad? So, so the, are those still beetles, or are they not beetles anymore? Well, they are. Well, that's what we're going to talk about in okay, just okay, a minute. Okay. In just a minute. What about this? What do you think this is? Okay, it's definitely a giant sea shell, the uh, chambered nautilus type type thing. This is an ammonite fossil. Ah, and. Does it look like it's still a seashell? What it totally does, except it's got the wrong texture. Yeah, and Kara and Diamond Star have got it. It's an ammonite, mollusk ammonite, and it does look like a seashell. And, but it's not made of a calcium carbonate shell anymore. It's actually made of rock. You can see right here, this is completely made of rock. And that's because it has been permineralized. It has been fossilized. Well, oh, it's pretty heavy. It is heavy, just like a rock. And if instead of being turned into rock, where all of the spaces were replaced by rock, what if instead it had been replaced by something else, such as pyrite? This right here is the mineral pyrite, also called fool's gold. And it is shiny, and you can see this kind of beautiful gold color it has. It looks like gold, but it's not gold. It's a mineral that forms. And I have another ammonite, a smaller one, where instead of having this shape of the animal replaced by rock, it was replaced by pyrite. It's beautiful, isn't it? Okay, th that one almost doesn't look real. It's so cool. But it is real. This is a real fossil. Of course, this was cut in half and polished. When it was found, it looked more like this. But you could still say, wow, that is an ammonite, but it's all shiny. And instead of being replaced by, by rock, you know, minerals like feldspar, it was replaced by the mineral pyrite. So this one was so pretty, it got cut in half and polished. So can you make a fossil out of anything? Fossils are actually pretty rare. If you look at all of the animals and the plants that have lived on Earth, and fossils are made out of things that have died. If you look at all of the animals and plants that have died, less than one in a million actually end up being a fossil. Okay, that, that makes sense because the, the conditions have to be just they right be for something to be right. preserved. So these beetles right here, if these beetles had not fallen into tar and then been covered by other sediment, they would not have been turned into fossils. Uh, another animal might have come along and said, ooh, a snack, and eaten them right up. Our bearded dragon, Delta, loves eating beetles. If she sees a beetle, she'll just eat it up. 
So a lot of animals and plants that die, they get eaten by other animals, or they might just decompose and break down. For something to turn into a fossil, it has to be covered in sediment or buried, and it has to be buried for such a long time that that sediment becomes rock. That's, that's kind of crazy. So the tar happens to be one of those weird situations where something could be preserved because I mean, nobody's going to go into a tar pit to get a beetle. Uh, that, that wouldn't make any sense. Now, if you go in a tar pit to get a beetle, you're going to become a fossil too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happens. Let's take a look at our, our slides because I have a quick little challenge for you that I did using some clay. So this is just stretchy moldable clay. Mm. And I pushed a sea, a sea shell into it, Math Dad, and I want you to see if you can guess which shell All I right. used. Okay, so we've got four options here. The first thing I notice is there's a pointy end to whatever show you used. It had a pointy, almost looks like a beautiful leaf, a Christmas ornament or something. Okay. So was the I, I, it's, shell... It's got to be A or D just because of the pointy part. Mimi Grace says D. Isaac says D. Emily says D. It is indeed D. If you take okay. that fossil D and put it in the clay, it matches exactly. So by looking at this fossil, even if you didn't have the shells, you'd be able to, to match and tell which one it was. Now, on our next slide, I'm not going to tell you what I made a print out of. I just want you to tell me if you can if you can guess. All right. So what was this? Oh, I totally know what that is. Should I say it? Or should yeah. I wait? Okay. It, it's a key. It is a key. And you can tell because it has the shape of a key. Now. Can you tell which key it was? Oh, yes, I can. It's I, that first one. I, that's the first one has the it. three holes in it. Now, fossil hunting and learning about fossils is a little bit like a, a mystery, solving a mystery. So you were able to tell which key it was because the shape matched exactly. And it turns out that our the bones, because usually when you were looking at animals, we're looking at bones when we're looking at fossils because the soft tissue is usually not preserved. Bones have different shapes depending on what job they have, just like a key will have a different shape depending on which lock it is supposed to open. So if you study bones and know about the shape of bones, then when you find one, you can tell which animal it came from. Th those were really crisp and clean fossils. And I suspect most fossils one would come across in the wild would not be quite so distinct and e easily seeable. And in fact, you might wonder, well, is this a fossil or is it not a fossil? Sometimes it can be hard to tell. Let's look at a couple more examples. Well, we just, just so. Uh, I want to say one thing about that because it's kind of weird. It's a print of where a, a key had been, but it wasn't actually it wasn't the key actually itself. The key. Yeah, it just it's like evidence that a key was once here. So that, there, that that type of fossil is called a mold or a cast. And if we open up this fossil that I have right here, so this is a piece of rock that was found in Morocco, and let's open it up. And take a look. Can you oh, change our view? So if we open up this fossil, you can see that we have two sides to it. And one is the mold and one is the cast. And the actual trilobite, it kind of dissolved away and is gone. And what's left is the print of the trilobite. Okay, now you're using the words mold and cast there. I, I, I somehow thought they were going to be synonymous, but you're... One of them's a mold. Yes. So this one that has the, the shape that kind of goes out, that's the mold. And then this one here that has the imprint, this is the cast. Gotcha. And so th this is what, it, what the shape would actually have been. And then this one fit on, on top. Yes. So fossils sometimes are molds or casts, just evidence of what used to be there. But other times we get the actual thing that has just been turned into a rock, like this piece of petrified wood. So this piece of petrified wood, you can tell that it's wood when you look at it. You can see hints of growth rings. You can see cracks. You can see little knobs where branches used to be. But this piece of petrified wood, which is actually in um, my father-in-law's house, <laughs> it is so heavy. It weighs more than 300 pounds because it's not made of wood anymore. And if you dropped it into a fire pit, it would not burn. It is literally made of stone. But how can that even happen? If How can it turn into stone? That doesn't make sense. Over a long period of time. And it happens because of how sedimentary rocks are formed. Remember, when we have sedimentary rocks formed, we have pieces of sand or other sediment that come together 
and then minerals go in between those little grains and they cement them together. And when you have something like a piece of wood, the wood is made up of cells. It's made up of tiny little pieces that are put together and the minerals go down in between and they fill in all the spaces and they change the wood into rock. So it's actually replacing the organic material. It is. With, with rock. It is. Organic material just means like the carbon, the wood. It's replacing that with rock. And that just happens over a very long period of time? It takes millions of years to make a fossil. Wow. Okay, so if you look at this one, it's, it's clearly a tree. You can almost see the tree rings here. You can. And on uh, this part that's oh, been yeah. polished, you can totally see the tree rings. And you can also see this is no longer wood. This is mostly quartz now. It's been made into a fossil. Whoa. Okay, I, I, I like this. Are you ready for a guessing game? I'm ready. All right, Math Dad, what do you think this fossil is? Take a guess. Okay. Um, those are a uh, wishbone from a chicken, and they broke off the, the two pieces. That's, that's what it is. It's a chicken. It's a chicken? Yep. So th that almost does look like it could be wishbones, but up at the top, that roundish bone, that's not really what you see at, at, in a chicken wishbone. Oh, these were big prehistoric chickens. <laughs> big prehistoric chickens? That's right. We have a couple good guesses in the chat. Um, wishbone, Whoa. dinosaur, pelvis. pelvis. Are you guys ready for the answer now? Yeah. The yeah. answer is this was were bones from the largest snake to ever have lived on our planet. It was called Titanoboa. And anacondas and reticulated pycons, those green ones there, those are really long. But Titanoboa could be more than 50 feet long. And to get an idea of how big this is, because it's hard to picture how big this snake is, <laughs> if you open up your front door and you have a standard sized front door, if Titanoboa was gonna slither in through your front door, it would have to squeeze through. If Ooh. it came past you, it would be almost up to your waist if you're an average size human. That is enormous. You're saying it could barely fit through the front door because that it's, it's how big that it was. big and round. Yes. So back to this, this vertebrae here. How do they know Titanoboa was that big? Because they can compare this skeleton to other snake skeletons. And the size of this vertebrae and the size of those ribs that come down from that vertebrae are so big that they're able to put together and figure out, okay, Titanoboa was a snake that was that large. So this is along the back of the snake, the, yes. the, the vertebrae. The, the, that go together to make the spine. Man, I didn't realize snakes had bones like that. Amazing, right? So that's, that's <laughs> our first little mystery. And another good question to ask is, if Titanoboa was that big, how come we don't have snakes that big right now? Oh, was this like when we used to have giant insects because the conditions on Earth were different? There was more oxygen. Maybe this so some condition changed. Probably not the oxygen. It, it was a different a different environment. So Titanoboa lived right after the dinosaurs. So the meteor mm -hmm. came, wiped out the dinosaurs. The planet was very warm, about ten degrees warmer during that time period than it is now, and it lived in tropical jungles. And those tropical jungles were so warm, the snakes were get e able to get even bigger. An anaconda actually can't get that big right now because it gets so big that since it's cold blooded, it's not able to even digest its food if it gets if it were to get that big. Oh, because it's harder to get the heat it would need. Yeah. Oh, Fascinating, man. right? Yeah, it is. All right, another question for you, Math Dad. This is a picture of one of the oldest fossils that has ever been discovered without reading the caption. Can you tell me what okay, it is? Okay, what what in the world do we have there? Those are prehistoric fish eggs that um, were covered by tar that was spewed from a volcano. And, <laughs> That's uh, a good guess. They are not fish eggs. These are cyanobacteria. Oh. And bacteria, it turns out, are the oldest fossils that have ever been discovered. Kara Rogers has got it, and <laughs> Mason's thinking snake eggs. They do look kind of like snake eggs, but what you can't really tell from this picture is size, and the size here is microscopic. So have, you have to look under a microscope to see these. How in the world did they find those? Because how would you know where to look? <laughs> well, they the first um, cyanobacteria fossils they found actually came from a cool structure called a stromatolite. These still live today. They've been around for billions of years. The oldest stromatolite fossils we have, which you can see right here, they were 
over a billion years old. And all you can see, they've turned to rock, but you can just see these beautiful patterns from what used to be hummocks like this. And this hump of what looks like rock in the ocean is actually alive. It's a mat of algae. And each, each year, there's a little bit more of a layer that grows on it, just kind of like a tree ring. You get these layers of algae as the stromatolite grows. And so only the outside part is alive? The outside part is alive. And then underneath that outside layer, you have older layers of the algae and the bacteria that were living, you know, hundreds of years ago. They're, they grow very, very slowly. Wow. Okay. So this oldest fossil, that's, that must be over a billion, a billion years oh. old. The the oldest one that they that they've dated, they estimate is about three and a half billion years, which is so old, <laughs> so old. So there's our oldest fossil, and now we have one more. Can you guess what this okay. is? Okay. Well, this is it's got to be flowers, right? It's, it's got, got to be. It looks a lot like a flower, but this was found from before the time that we had flowering plants. Uh -uh. I just discovered an earlier flower right here. It looks a lot like a flower, but it is <laughs> not a flower. And what? this is a mold and cast type fossil where the actual animal is gone. And we just have left over this imprint in what used to be mud. <laughs> and everyone in the chat is also saying flowers. Erin Knowles says ocean creature. An ocean creature is correct. This is actually an animal, not a plant, although it looks a lot like a plant. Oh, wow. It's like this a, is like a, a jellyfish type. Yeah, it's a crinoid. They're related to starfish and sea urchins. And some of them will be free floating and move around. Others attach themselves to rock with a long stalk. And they really do look like an underwater sea flower, but they're not a flower. They're an animal. And with those little feathery antennas, they catch tiny little pieces of plankton and other drifting things going by and put them in their mouth and eat them. Okay, that, that one was genuinely tricky. Uh, that's, how, how old would you estimate that fossil? Do you Ooh, know? That, that crinoid, I didn't have time to look up, but they they are very old. They're back in the Precambrian, there were crinoids. Okay, but, so, but you said it was before flowers. So Yes. Yeah. And, and that was one of the big surprises for me last week that I'm still trying to wrap my mind around is that somehow the flowers came after the earliest of the dinosaurs were here. Like, so flowers are a relatively new thing on earth, even though plants have been around for quite a while. They are, they are. So let's talk a little bit about different types of fossils. We're going to be going in just a minute to page 78 of the notes. The two types we've talked about so far are permineralized or fossilized, where you have a piece of shell or a piece of bone or something like this T-Rex claw, and this is a replica. This is not an actual fossil. If it was, it would be a lot heavier. Is this super heavy like a piece of stone? No. It's pretty light. This is a replica of a T-Rex claw fossil, That's which so big, though. gives you an idea of just how big a Tyrannosaurus rex is. But the actual fossil that this replica was made of, it was quite heavy, and it was no longer made of what a nail or a claw is made out of. It's actually made of stone because it has been fossilized. And an even better word for fossilized is permineralized, because that means mm. that what used to be a cell in maybe a bone or in a feather, what used to be a cell has been replaced and the inside of the cell has been filled in with minerals, sometimes even a really pretty mineral like pyrite. There are other types of fossil. I want a gummy bear fossil, that's what I want. A gummy bear, I think, would probably dissolve and not be fossilized. But no, no, if it... no, no. I want that to be what the fossil's made of. Oh, made of a gummy bear? Yeah. Uh, then I would just eat it. Oh, I'm sorry, Math Dad. Um, uh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> gummy bear is not going to be what your fossil is going to be made of. <laughs> no naturally occurring gummy bears? No. Um, sugar, gummy sugar is not a naturally occurring mineral. <sighs> the rarest type of fossil of all is an actual specimen when you have the actual body of the animal or the plant. And this rarely happens in things like amber. So if we have a piece of amber, and this amber is more than 40 mil, about 40 million years old, inside this piece of amber is a small little insect. Amber is fossilized tree sap. When you have tree sap that is oozing out of a tree, sometimes insects will get caught inside it. And there is a tiny little insect in here 
and it's the actual body of the insect inside this piece of amber. So it hasn't been mineralized. What would you call that? Per, per mineralized. Per mineralized. It's literally the same the, yeah, the insect. Yeah, the same material. Because it's, it's been, actual... been preserved. There's been no way for any minerals or other things to even get in there. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is where Jurassic Park got its storyline, right? They, That's were, right? they were able to get the DNA from a prehistoric mosquito and that was inside some amber and in, in real life that would be a little bit more difficult but this actual fossil remain it happens in amber and it happens in ice if something is frozen and locked in ice those are really the only the only types where you'll get an actual specimen but the last type of fossil that we haven't talked about yet is a trace fossil what if the animal left footprints that's not the actual animal but you can tell quite a bit about um, about an animal and how it walked by studying footprints. So that is a useful fossil to learn more about something from the past. And we call those trace fossils. Oh, okay. So let, let's, let's go through these. So that a trace fossil, something like a footprint that the animal didn't stick around, but there's evidence that it mm -hmm. was at one point there. So a mold or a cast. So that was like the ammonite. Yep. And the trilobite. Well, the, the mold and the fast, that was like our, our trilobite, yep, where we could split it open and look at both halves. Oh, yeah. And then, the, oh, I, I, see, I see. I did say that wrong. And then per mineralized, mineralized fossil. So that was something like the petrified wood. Exactly. Or, or a dinosaur bone that they're so physical things that have turned into rocks. And then an actual specimen was the rarest of all. So that was like this insect in the amber. Exactly. Okay. Now, if I wanted to try to make a fossil of me, which of these could I actually do? So that well, was, so I could definitely do a footprint, right? You you could make a footprint, I'm, but you have to understand fossils take a long time to make. So please don't make a fossil of yourself, Math Dad, okay. because it would take millions of years, and I don't want to wait that long. Okay. I want to study fossils of things that <laughs> used to be around a long time ago. But, but like the a mold and cast, I mean, that's something that it would just have to be to stay there forever, right? Mm -hmm. And the same with the, th these ones. So only only the footprint one is something that even I could pretend to do now. Correct. All right. One of my favorite types of fossils is a trace fossil. And these are actually fairly common and it's called coprolite. This is a piece of fossilized turtle poop. And you might be thinking, ooh, science bomb, don't touch it. But it's not poop anymore, now it's a rock. It has been permineralized and turned into stone. So how do we even know that this is fossilized excrement from a turtle? <laughs> we know it because of the shape and where it's found. These are often found near other fossils where you can find the remains of like, oh, that's the animal it went with. And sometimes they can even learn what an animal ate. If they can find pieces of copper light that come from the animal, mm. they can say, aha, now we can figure out what the animal's diet was. Because sometimes they're undigested, fossilized bits of plants or other animals inside the copper light. Amazing, right? Yeah, yeah it is. You you'd really have to be on the lookout to, to find things like that. <laughs> I want to look real quick at one more thing in the notes. We're going to do a quick matching thing. And then we have poll questions for you. So again, for a fossil to form, something has to be buried. And it has to be buried completely. And usually all of the soft parts of the tissue are going to dissolve. And what we end up with is the skeleton or the harder parts that have then been turned into rock. And it can be covered in mud. It can be um, a river can bury sediments in it. It could be swallowed by a sand dune, buried in ash from a volcano, sink in a swamp, or even sometimes in a storm, you can get sediment in, in the ocean that can sweep up and bury ocean animals. Now, man, I mean, it's, it's a, just an interesting question to think, yeah, how would you preserve something for, for generations? So I'm just living where we live. I mean, there's evidence of people being here before, but trying to learn things about them. Most things on earth just don't last that long. If you write in a journal, well, maybe that journal will be around hundred years from now, 200 years from now, but a thousand years from now? Fossil, yeah. Fossils are amazing. And one yeah. of the funnest parts about studying fossils is that it really is like a treasure hunt where you're trying to piece together a mystery. Hmm. 
Now let's let's match these real quick, and then we do not have a where in the world today. We're going to go straight to polls after this. So if I was going to ask you, I told you we have evidence of Animalocaris here. Which fossil would you match to Animalocaris? What in which, the world is that Animalocaris? Is that it? is an early predator that ate trilobites. So it lived more than 50 million years. It lived so long ago, We're talking almost 500 million years ago. And it ate, swam through the ocean and ate trilobites. Okay, so as I'm looking at these here, it's got to be this Cambrian thing, right? It is, from way back when. And then, of course, the Meganura, that's pretty easy to match because you can see that same shape, the wings, right. and it looks really a lot like it. Sometimes, though, things are not quite as easy to match. If you get part of a jawbone, did that match with this saber-toothed tiger or with the stegosaurus? Oh, man, no idea. But if you know that it's from the Pleistocene, oh, so that's which is more a more recent, recent that good, gives you a clue. Th then it would be a Smilodon? Yep, a Smilodon or the saber-toothed cat. And then this bark matches to this tree. And last, we have our footprint, which matches with our Stegosaurus. Wow. To even tell that that was a footprint would be, would be kind of kind of tricky. It would be. Yeah. It would be. Sometimes, sometimes the footprints look really distinct and easy, and other times they can be kind of eroded and a little more difficult. What, what do they call somebody who studies fossils? A paleontologist. Paleontology. Paleontology. And cool. we had a great question in the in the chat. Can anything be made into a fossil? And the answer is almost. I, we, you saw here that what we have fossils, examples of fossils here, we have things that are a little harder, like a beetle shell or a shell of an ocean animal or a claw from an animal or the remains of what used to be kind of a scaly hard creature. So bones and harder tissues those tend to get preserved better than soft tissues, but there are even fossils of jellyfish. Whoa. And a jellyfish is not <laughs> a hard animal, but if it lands just right in very fine sediment, in very fine mud, and then if there's like a volcanic explosion and the next layer of ash that comes is a different texture, then it will make an imprint and you'll end up with a cast of the jellyfish. Our IT guy points out in the chat that paleo is a Greek word that means ancient. So Ooh. a paleontologist, somebody who's studying ancient things. Yeah, study of ancient things. We do have a very happy birthday. Oh, actually, today is April 5th. We do not have any birthdays today, but we have several on Wednesday. That's right. All right, it is time so to see what you have learned. Head over to itempool.com slash sciencemom slash live to participate in the polls. And even if you're not actually participating, make sure you answer it out loud. Try to commit to an answer. Starting off here, first question, what is a fossilized Tyrannosaurus claw made out of? So not the, the replica that we have here, but an in, actual in, fossilized Tyrannosaurus claw, would it be made out of rock, bone, keratin, or iron? And keratin is what your fingers are, and your hair are made out of. F fingernails. Fingernails, yes. Fingernails and hair are made out of. Bone is made out of mostly um, kind of calcium salts and things. And then rock, of course, is made out of silicon and other silica and other minerals. We have a good question here from um, Cat's Meow. What's the biggest fossil ever found? And it depends on if you're talking about an animal that lived on land or an animal that lived in the ocean. But the largest land ant animal um, ever found was a sauropod, kind of like a, a brontosaurus. So really large, and I believe I believe the newest largest one is actually called like Titanosaur or something like that. But they're they're finding small fossils and putting them together. Well, the, to, to, they're trying to assemble them, isn't that right? They are. So the, the femur, the the thigh bone of that animal, I think is one of is, the, is largest, the largest. Um, one of the largest. Let's that's go a, ahead and finish and reveal. Great, great question. All right, and the chat says rock. That is correct, which still just boggles my mind that minerals from outside could come and replace the bone, but th these fossils are heavy. They're, they're made of rock. They are. They are. Another great question from um, from Noah. Have they actually gotten DNA out of animals in amber? They have, but not a complete structure because the DNA and the other parts that are made to make that insect, they sort of break down over time. So they've gotten some fragments of DNA from fossils, but not a complete DNA sequence. All right, what is the rarest type of fossil? 
Ooh. So we talked about four different categories, a trace fossil, molds or casts, permineralized, so or fossilized, or an actual specimen. So which is the rarest? Ooh, I don't think I'm fooling too many on this one either. Great question from Haley. In a lab, if you were to warm up an anaconda, could you grow it into a giant snake? Like, Whoa. like the, the huge boa that we saw, the prehistoric boa. <laughs> Reptiles definitely will, can grow larger in a warmer environment, but an anaconda doesn't have the, the genetics to grow that large. I think, I don't think you'd be able to get it nearly that big. So over time, the longer ones might do better. So that there would be that their genes might pass on, and so, so they might slowly grow bigger but generation if, after generation. But if you had a breeding program, like you know, people will breed dogs to have very different sizes and shapes. And if you had a breeding program to try and breed the biggest snake, I think it would take a long time before you could get one as big as Gigantoboa boa. Don't or don't, Titanoboa. don't create giant snakes, guys. Just don't do it. <laughs> All right, and. Yeah, chat says actual specimen. Well done, guys. N not bad, not bad. All right. What portion of animals become fossils when they die? Mm. Is it one in 10, one in 100, one in 10,000, one in a million? And while answers are coming in on that, Xander had a great question. Would footprints in concrete eventually be considered fossils? So if you pour concrete and then you like put handprints in it, hundreds of thousands of years from now, millions of years from now, are pe other people gonna find that and say, aha, here are fossils of someone's handprints? Only if that concrete is then buried in another layer of rock and then they both turn into rock. The concrete is already kind of an artificial rock that you could say. I think it counts. You think it counts? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I would count it as a fossil. I mean, it's evidence that something was there. As long as it's preserved, I, I don't know what the life of concrete will be. Will concrete eventually erode away? I think only if it's buried in another layer of sediment would it become <laughs> a true fossil. But it could happen. Agree to disagree. <laughs> All right. Chat says one in a million. So yeah, it was less than one in a million animals will become fossils when they die. And we, we said the, the reason why, though, is because the circumstances seem to have to conspire together to actually preserve something. But most things are going to rot away or to disappear one way or another. There, there won't be any evidence preserved, but every once in a while, something is left over. But it has to be just the right conditions of it being buried and then, then preserved. Last question. No, oh, uh, second question last. four. What type of fossil is petrified wood? A trace fossil, a mold or cast, permineralized, and or is it an actual specimen? And we had a great question from Sam asking, aren't molds cast the same thing as footprints in a way? Like what's the difference between a trace fossil and a mold or cast? So we'll So I, I would say Well Bob, oh, we'll answer want, it. Answer it as soon as this one is done. That's right. No, no hints. <clears throat> <laughs> Nice try there. Nice and try. Noah has another great question. If global warming increases the temperature enough, could Titanoboa come back? I watched an interview with a scientist at, um, at Florida, the Florida Natural History Museum that answered just that question. And that paleontologist, his opinion was that there's probably not going to be enough habitat for that process to take place because you, it would, you'd have to have a lot of swampy jungle that would be very warm. And we just don't have that much swampy jungle as we did back when Titanoboa so existed. Not, so it's not happening anytime soon. Not happening anytime soon. Theoretically possible, not probable. All right. Okay. They're crushing these questions today. Prepper mineralized is correct. That is. And let's talk real quick about the difference between a trace fossil and a mold or a cast. The only real difference is that this is direct evidence of the animal. So this is like it is a lot like a trace fossil where we don't have the actual animal there, we just have the imprint, but it's the imprint of the animal. A trace fossil is an imprint of something else. So it could be a footprint or it could be, you know, the something that's not the animal, like copper light is the excrement of the animal, not the actual animal. Turtle so poop. <laughs> that's the difference between a trace fossil and a mold or cast. All right, and then here was a fun, question uh, proposed by science mom Krista actually. So the Pokemon franchise has 26 fossil Pokemon that are based on real life fossils. Is that true or false? But you wish you'd studied your Pokemon now, science mom. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know the answer to this one. 
but there are some pretty fun Pokemon. And I, some of them do look kind of dinosaur-esque. So. In Smash Bros, I like to play with Pikachu. Although my, our son, my son whooped on three of us yesterday. Yeah, well, and they, they destroyed us. Like He had like 17 KOs, and he, he beat all three of us. When, when, when they play, it's Math Dad and my our two daughters all against our son. And nope. he beats them all each time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And... They said true. And, and they... true is correct. <laughs> Nicely done, guys. All right. Way to go, unbeatable science kids. Impressive performance, guys. It is. It is. But it didn't even come close to stumping them on any of those questions. Nope. And a, a few people did not know it. Yeah, a few people were saying, I don't know anything about Pokemon. Yeah, that, that was me, too. I was like, I've seen Pikachu. That's the only Pokemon I know. <laughs> that is okay. That last question was just for fun. <laughs> All right. We are going to, uh, LaFon Raymond was the first one I saw with a request for Orange Justice. We'll play that one real fast, and then we are going to wrap up. <laughs> Thank you so much, and yeah, Pickle Obsessed, we will, do, we will do more hard questions next time. This one was, these ones were a little bit easier, but we, right. like, we like variety. All right, they're asking for it. You're, you're ready to deliver math, Dad? Oh, yeah. So on Wednesday, we are going to have a lesson about how to identify rocks. So we will be back Wednesday with how to identify what types of rocks are what. And if you would like to submit any, you can email a picture to us and where you found it, because we will have a couple um, submissions at the end where we'll see if we can identify your rocks. And we have a geologist friend who's going to help out. Oh. And if any of you decide to make your own fossils, by all means, tag us on social media or, or send pictures. We'd love to see what you come up with. That's right. Work hard, grow smart, and we will see you on Wednesday.